What's going on everybody? Toby Wan Shinobi here and today I'm going to show you some pretty crazy tricks with the assault rifles in chapter 5 season 1. And I'm going to show you how to use these weapons most effectively. In this guide I'm going to show you how to completely get rid of vertical recoil on your assault rifles with a glitch, how to get perfect hip fire accuracy with assault rifles even in the air, and examples of how to lead your targets properly with each AR. I gotta say, I thought I knew how to use these assault rifles well in Chapter 5 Season 1, but I was wrong. I have made some pretty awesome discoveries when I was testing these weapons in my own testing grounds map. I will leave the map code in the description and the comments below. After about three hours straight of testing these weapons in different scenarios and using different mod combinations, I have learned how to use these weapons in a completely different way and I am going to share that with you today. So let's get into it. All right, let's start with a really juicy tip and that is getting rid of vertical recoil on assault rifles in chapter five, season one. All right, so when you shoot your assault rifle like this, right, we're looking at the horizon, we start shooting it, right? We gotta pull down and try to fight that recoil, that vertical recoil. It climbs really, really intense, even with a 1.3 scope, right? I do have to pull down a decent amount. Now it's gonna be a lot harder with a 4X, right? With a 4X scope, you really gotta pull down to fight that recoil. With a 1.3, you know, your screen's not moving as much. It's a little less sensitive, so it's not as difficult, but it is still there, right? If I'm fighting this guy out here and I start shooting at him, my recoil, I have to keep fighting it and I pull down the entire time. You know, you can see my hand on the right over here. Here's the trick. Instead, what you gotta do is start firing really low, hold down the trigger, and then snap up to your enemy. And this is because there's a maximum vertical recoil distance in Fortnite Chapter 5 that basically you have to reach a certain height and then at that point, it starts maxing out and it no longer climbs any further. So basically you're tricking the game to make it think that you've raised your reticle high enough and it's at that maximum recoil, right? So like this. You see how I'm not moving my hand at all. I'm not adjusting my mouse at all to fight that recoil whatsoever. I just now only have to aim left and right. And that really, really helps us with our long range accuracy. Typically you'd be moving your mouse around and be focusing on pulling down or your, your joystick on your controller, pulling down, fighting that recoil. But now what we can do is we can strafe aim. We can focus a little more on our strafe aim movement because we lock out that recoil and now we just have to move left and right to make very minor aim adjustments. So like this, right? We snap up and now we just use our left joystick to keep moving and keep sh shooting this target, right? Keeping our aim on the target. And that's a lot easier to do when you're not climbing, you're, when your recoil isn't climbing so high and you're having to fight it the entire time. Because now you can just move left and right and just focus on hitting those shots. All right, now before we dive into attachments and how to best use these weapons, I want to show you just their base time to kill, right? How fast it takes to eliminate enemies. Enemies that are basically standing still. Now, this does not account for kind of the consistency and the difficulty to use weapons because these guys are standing still. And we're going to talk about all kinds of different ways to make these weapons more effective and how to use them effectively because that is a big thing about each one of these weapons. If you use these weapons correctly and you do the right things when you use them, they're all very, very very deadly but if you don't there is a pretty big discrepancy between them even though the TTKs might look pretty similar but let's just go ahead and get into the TTK so right now 50 meters out we're using a blue striker AR and this is about how fast you can eliminate someone that has 250 HP with all body shots we're gonna do all body shots here because I think that's just gonna be more consistent we don't want to mix any headshots in it gets a little messy that way TTK of a nemesis AR 50 meters out TTK of an Enforcer AR, 50 meters out. TTK of a Gold Striker AR, 50 meters out. TTK of a Nemesis, Gold Nemesis, 50 meters out. TTK of a Gold Enforcer, 50 meters out. TTK of Nisha's Mythic Striker AR, about 50 meters out. TTK of Montague's Mythic Nemesis AR, 50 meters out. All right, now really quick, we're gonna show you 90 meters out for each one of these ARs. And this is where you're really gonna start to experience some fall off damage with say the Striker AR. So I'm gonna do my best to hit as many body shots as I can, but there might be some uh, recoil here and that is a factor. All right, Striker AR, 90 meters out. 
All right, Nemesis AR, 90 meters out. All right, Enforcer AR, 90 meters out. And let's throw Nishas in there, 90 meters out. Now, I gotta say, Nishas is really inconsistent in this range because it doesn't have any of those stability perks. Now, here's Montague's, 90 meters out. A lot more stable, that's for sure. All right, now let's talk about assault rifle mods or attachments. So we're at the workbench here, and let's just start with scopes. Generally, with most assault rifles, I usually go for a red eye or a hollow. These are low zoom scopes. I like the 1.3 hollow because it gives you a nice little 1.3 time zoom. It's a nice balance between being able to see your enemy a little bit further range and having too much screen shake. Now, if you go with the 2X, the 4X especially, if you get a 4X assault rifle and you start shooting the thing, the screen is shaking like crazy. So I I really don't recommend it unless you're going to use the recoil glitch that I taught you where you start low and then you aim up high and it just levels out that vertical recoil. But even then, right, your screen is shaking a lot and it's kind of like off-putting. People are going to shoot you as well with a 4X and it's going to shake your screen. So typically I don't go with the 4X. The only assault rifle I'll consider using a longer range scope on is the Enforcer AR. And I usually run a two scope on that because it's good for countering snipers at long range, has very nice fall off damage and can hit at really long ranges. Apart from that, I use the 1.1 and the 1.3. Now, as far as magazines go, I pretty much always go with a speed mag, except for on the Striker AR. And the reason for that is that the Striker AR puts out so many bullets that it's kind of difficult sometimes at longer ranges to eliminate an enemy in a single clip unless you've got those seven extra bullets. And that's what the drum mag does, is it adds seven extra bullets to your magazine of any AR. So a lot of times, you know, you'll be shooting someone from afar and you won't land every single shot. Maybe, you know, you're kind of struggling to hit those shots because they're moving around it's pretty far range and you just need those extra seven bullets to finish them off or they're using a riot shield and a lot of times you'll break the riot shield but then you'll have to reload as soon as it breaks well those seven extra bullets will really help with that and that's why i've been running the drum magazine on the striker only now as far as the nemesis and the enforcer go just run the speed mag on those because you don't really need that much ammo when you've got that low of a rate of fire all right now let's talk about under barrels as far as under barrels go i pretty much only recommend the vertical four Grip. So you can see here that the angled foregrip really doesn't make much of a difference. All right, this is with angled foregrip and this is without. So you can barely tell the difference between those two scope in times, right? It's a little snappier on the angled foregrip, but not much, right? It is really negligible and I don't really recommend it when you could get better stability out of the vertical foregrip. Now there's also a laser attachment. I have found with the laser that the only way that it really makes a difference is when you're jumping and using hip fire, right? So 30 meters or so, either weapon with a laser, without the laser is perfectly usable at hip fire if you're controlling bloom and recoil fairly well. So here is without a laser, Right, pretty much shredded that guy. Not a problem with a laser. Right, it's not all that different. And now we come up here and this is where it makes a difference is when you're jumping around. Okay, so we're jumping around now and we're not using a laser. Okay, now we're jumping around and we are using a laser. So when you're jumping around, the laser does make a difference. Definitely more accurate with the hip fire. So it kind of like controls that really wide bloom a little bit more. And it's definitely helpful. It's a lot more accurate than without the laser jumping around like this, right? So we're missing a lot more shots than jumping around with the laser. And I will use a laser on the Nemesis AR, which we'll talk about in a bit. All right, now let's talk about the barrels, right? We got a muzzle brake and we got a suppressor. The suppressor will lower the sound of your gunshots and also hides you off of visual audio past 120 meters, I think. So if you're over 120 meters from your enemy and you're shooting a suppressed AR, they're not gonna hear it. But the problem is your enemy usually isn't shooting a suppressed AR, so it really doesn't matter. But it's kind of nice, personally, I like it because it's quiet and that just allows me to focus better. Also, there is a visual flare, gun flare, coming out of this gun, right? You can't really see it with this scope, but you can see at the end of my AR right here, there's a lot of uh, flash, right? A lot of muzzle flash coming out the end. Well, with a silencer, there is no muzzle flash, so you can see at the end of the gun, not a muzzle flash going on. And I gotta say that really, you don't really see much of the muzzle flash when you're shooting your weapon, right? With pretty much any scope, you're not really seeing a lot of muzzle flash, so it doesn't really make sense, except for within hip fire, right? That's when it can become 
become a little distracting when you're shooting someone you kind of got a lot of like little explosions coming out of the front of your gun a little distracting personally i actually really do like the suppressor a lot on my ar i don't know why it is i think it just feels like i can focus better when it's nice and quiet and there's not the muzzle flash but uh yeah it's kind of a personal thing oh and one more note about suppressors is they do actually have a very small damage nerf at extreme ranges so when you're outside the weapon's effective range meaning the minimum damage that you can deal which is uh for the striker over 90 meters you will have a one damage point difference with a blue ar so this is without a suppressor and this is with a suppressor. So you can see there's a one point damage difference, 20 versus 21. But once you get within the weapon's effective range, you know, less than 90 meters, the damage is the exact same. 24 without a suppressor, 24 with a suppressor. So it really doesn't make much of a difference. But as much as I like the silencer, I know that the muzzle brake is a much better option. So I usually go for muzzle brake these days, and it's actually better than vertical foregrip. The muzzle brake will reduce recoil more than the vertical foregrip. So if you're trying to choose between the two, muzzle brake is the better option for recoil control. Here's a gun without the muzzle brake and here's a gun with the muzzle brake. So without, with. It's much more stable left and right. There's not a lot of horizontal recoil when you're using a muzzle brake, which is really nice. Can really make a difference in uh, longer range AR fights. You see, the gun will sway without the muzzle brake. All right, now that we've covered the mods, let's go ahead and talk about the assault rifles themselves, how to best use them, and any little secrets that we may have found. First off, let's talk about the Striker AR, which is probably my favorite assault rifle this season. This thing absolutely shreds and has much higher DPS than any other assault rifle in the game. So, a blue Striker hits for 202 damage per second, or the next highest AR, a Nemesis. Nemesis AR hits for 160, which is a pretty massive difference, which I believe is about a 20% increase over the Nemesis AR. And the Enforcer AR has an even lower DPS at 138 for a blue. Just to put things in perspective, a blue Striker AR does 202 damage per second, and a Mythic Hyper SMG does 204. But that 204 is only at very close range. Once you get over to medium range, it is a very large difference between these two guns. So Striker has much better DPS at medium and long range as well. And a gold striker does 226 damage per second, where Valeria's mythic does 204. So a gold will still beat the mythic at close range as well. So in terms of damage per second, there is nothing beating a striker AR except for a sniper headshot. Even Oscar's mythic shotgun does 195 damage per second, and the legendary striker does 226. So if you were to land every single shot with your AR at close range, you would still beat Oscar's mythic shotgun. Now, when it comes to assault rifles, I gotta say the rarity isn't all that important. If you're doing a blue or better, definitely mod that thing out because the mods are gonna make most of the difference. A gold takes this many bullets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And a blue takes this many bullets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's really a one bullet difference between a blue and a gold striker. And that's pretty much the case with all the assault rifles, right? It's really just a one bullet difference and the DPS is kind of misleading. So the striker AR is really, really good to pair with a sniper because it's really good for these medium and close ranges. So I consider the effective range of the striker AR to be about 60 meters or so. After 56 meters, the damage actually starts to decrease a little by little and once you hit up to 90 meters it's going to be very hard to kill anyone at a long range unless you've got them hurt before at least with a single clip it's going to take multiple clips to kill enemies past 90 meters with a striker ar that's for sure unless your enemy is standing still so it's best to use the striker ar at medium range or you know medium long range something like 50 60 meters or so this is great for the striker ar because the recoil isn't too severe at this distance you're going to hit most of your shots especially if you use the recoil trick like I taught you where you aim low and then you just pull up and it just locks right in. It is absolutely deadly especially with a striker AR because it has a lot of vertical recoil but right there it's just basically a cheat. <laughs> you can just lock it in and it's a laser beam right. It hits every single shot doesn't bounce around too much and it's pretty crazy. Now if you're going to hit fire this weapon I highly recommend tap firing it at medium ranges. So if you're past 20 meters say around like 25 meters you want to be tap firing to hit every shot 
with the Striker AR. And you really can practically hit every single shot if you're tap firing with this weapon, as long as you're tapping fairly slow. Now, if you hold the trigger down and you're strafing around like that, you're not going to get every shot to land, but you're still going to be doing pretty good damage. Now, the further out you get, obviously, the worse the hip fire is going to be, but it's still fairly effective at 40 meters if you're tap firing. You know, it's pretty impressive. I got to be honest. Now, with a laser, that'll even get better. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So this thing can definitely be used like an SMG. Now, in most cases, you're probably going to want to aim down sights at this range because, you know, hitting every bullet like that is just really good, especially if someone's out in the open. But if you want to put the jukes on and start hitting some shots like this while sliding around, absolutely go for it because it will work as long as you're tap firing. Now, as far as my recommended striker attachments, I basically build it out like this. It's a 1x scope, red eye sight, a drum mag, a vertical foregrip, and a muzzle brake. Sometimes I'll use the hollow, which is a 1.3 sight, but apart from that, they're pretty much the same. Only thing is the zoom is a little bit different on the 1.3 versus the 1.1. But yeah, this gun shreds with this setup because it's so stable, has just enough ammo to single clip people within 70 or 80 meters. And yeah, it's also really great for riot shield users because you've got that extended clip. All right, now let's talk about the Nemesis AR. The Nemesis AR is a really great all-arounder assault rifle. It's got very good damage at range, very good damage at close range, medium range, and then it's got a secret power, and that is the hip fire accuracy of this weapon. I gotta say, it's pretty incredible. It's very much like the burst assault rifle when you've got the laser on it. It's pretty much dead accurate when hip firing. Uh, so this is a blue version of it without a laser, and this is a gold version of it with a laser. So you can see I'm getting very active. I'm moving around, jumping around, and pretty much hitting every single shot. So this is really going to take people off guard because they'll be at ranges like this where you really shouldn't be hitting very many shots while moving this fast against, say, a shotgun. And you can combine this with flow berries, right, for even greater effect where you're in the air hitting shots when people just do not expect you to be hitting this many shots with an AR, right? You're hip firing, not aiming down sights, and it's pretty amazing. It's very similar to the burst SMG that has a laser sight on it. Now, when I'm running a laser on this weapon, I'll usually use the drum magazine we got a drum magazine on this as you can see it doesn't take that long to reload the speed mag looks like this you know so it's really not all that different and I use the drum mag with a laser because you're gonna be missing more shots right when you're jumping around being all crazy hard to hit you know you're gonna be missing more shots and uh, that can kind of help you with that reload and just kind of keep bullets going out towards your enemy so I got to say, this weapon's pretty incredible. It's kind of blown my mind, and I'm starting to consider it as my main assault rifle. Now, the other strength that it has is the range at which it can hit, right? And it's got zero horizontal recoil whatsoever. If you got the mods on it, this thing is not kicking left and right. It is accurate. You don't need to do any sort of glitch where you aim low and control the recoil because this thing really doesn't kick. Even a blue, if you got the mods on it, Right, I'm not using the glitch. This is hitting every shot. The Nemesis is just so stable and accurate at long range, much better than the Striker at these ranges. Also, the rate of fire being lower is actually a good thing because that bloom doesn't get out of control and you can really land a lot more shots where you're kind of focusing on your moving targets like this, right? The cadence is a little slower and you can kind of get a little more time to hit those shots and you're going to have a lot less misses because it's shooting slower. Where the striker, you know, you just kind of hold it down and it sprays out all those bullets so quick that a lot of them miss and then you get stuck on a reload. Whereas this gun right here, I got to say, is pretty amazing at long range and with an extended mag, you could probably kill two people at fairly long range where the striker, you barely kill one uh, unless they're being fairly easy to hit like this. So I gotta say that I am starting to like the Nemesis more and more, especially after learning about the hip fire accuracy on this thing. All right, so the fall off damage begins at 55 meters. So at 54 meters right here, you know, a blue is hitting for 32 and then past 55, it starts hitting for 31. And then every five meters or so, or maybe every 10 meters, you know, it starts just decreasing over time until you get to 90 meters. Once you're at 90 meters, it just locks out at a minimum of 27 damage, 
which I gotta say is pretty darn good compared to the striker, a blue striker that does 20 damage and you're gonna be missing a lot more shots because it shoots so many bullets and it shakes so much. So you really gotta take that into account at longer ranges, how gosh darn accurate this gun is because it's got perfect recoil, a nice cadence, and it hits pretty hard. So the recommended attachments that I run for the Nemesis is like this. If you're gonna do the laser hip fire thing, you wanna use the drum and the laser. You know, you're gonna be missing more shots, so that's what that drum is for. And if you just want maximum stability, which this gun is already stable enough, you can go with a speed mag and vertical foregrip. And just a quick comparison between that reload time, here's the speed mag. And here's the drum mag. You know, so it's noticeable, but those extra seven bullets, pretty good when you're hip firing. And with that stability also comes the ability to hit more headshots, which can also really change the DPS on this gun. So I gotta say, the more and more I think about it, the better this gun gets. It's really got a lot going for it and I need to give it a second chance. All right, now let's talk about the Enforcer AR. Now the Enforcer AR is a very good assault rifle if you're not carrying a sniper rifle. If you wanna do a two gun loadout, this is a pretty solid assault rifle because it's gonna allow you to still take very long range fights. And when I say very long range fights, I really do mean sniper ranges, right? It's very good to counter snipers with this gun at extreme ranges. Like we're at 130 meters right here and we're hitting a lot of shots on this guy you know he's granted he's standing still but it makes it very difficult for snipers to deal with you when you're just constantly tagging him in the face for 32 damage of the blue right now the damage fall off for this weapon actually begins at 100 meters so at 90 we hit 33 now at uh, 105 we're hitting 32 so right when you get to 99 we start hitting 33 again and maximum body shot with a blue is going to be 36. Now the damage fall off on the enforcer really starts to kick in at about 58 oddly. You start getting a little less damage and that's a blue enforcer but honestly the difference between 50 meters or 20 meters and over 100 meters is not all that different. You know hitting for 32 at 115 meters versus hitting for 36 at say 50 meters 40 meters really not all that different so this gun has a great damage fall off and that's really its strength. So when you're using this weapon you want to play range. Close range is not your friend because the fire rate is too slow on this thing so it's good for like peak shots right using cover where you're doing this thing but you don't want to be just standing out there and and shooting people like this because it's just dealing damage too slow and that's just pretty much going to lose you every fight if you're using it like that what you want to do is be using good cover taking some peak shots right even maybe going for some headshots because it hits really good headshot damage 59 with a blue at close range which is pretty wild right so treat it like kind of a dmr or even like a weak sniper rifle you could say right and that's really going to help you out now one of the biggest drawbacks of the enforcer ar is that it has a weird recoil it's got a little horizontal kick to the right. So if you see, I'm aiming, I'm holding the trigger down. We start over here and then we end up over to the right a little bit, right? And it's got a decent amount of kick as well. So if you aim low and you do the glitch, you know, then it starts kicking a little bit, but it really starts to kick if you're firing fast. So this is more of a tap firing weapon, not really recommended to uh, hold the fired button down, just kind of tap it and you'll be better off. Now this enforcer right here has a vertical foregrip and a muzzle brake, which is going to improve that kick to the right just a bit, but honestly, it's still a little gnarly. You really want to tap fire this weapon and kind of correct with every shot, because if you don't, it's going to look like this. Right, you can see it's kicking up into the right quite a bit, which is one of the biggest downsides of this weapon. You can't really just spam fire people without correcting between each shot. So as I'm firing this, I'm pulling down to the left, and that's pretty much a necessity. As far as hip fire goes on this weapon, it's pretty decent and a little bit better with a laser, but again, the DPS just isn't there to be doing this type of thing where you're out in the middle just like trying to hip fire people. It's just not gonna work in your favor in most cases if they've got a shotgun, an SMG, or a striker AR, right? So in most cases, you wanna be using this weapon from cover, and yeah, you could hit fire from cover, but just be a little more cautious when you're doing it because the damage output isn't that great. So doing something like this, sure, that's recommended. You don't have to uh, aim down sights, 
And honestly, like a lot of the ARs have pretty darn good hip fire accuracy, but with this one, especially because it jumps up and to the right, you're gonna have to kind of reset every single time and pull down to the left to hit accurate hip fire shots. As far as recommended attachments go on the Enforcer AR, I usually go with a hollow or a P2X, which is the 2X scope, but generally the hollow, speed mag, vertical foregrip, and muzzle brake on both of these things. So really all I change is sometimes the optic, especially if I'm not gonna run a sniper, then I'll probably put a 2X optic on this thing. All right, guys, I hope that this video was helpful. I hope it takes your assault rifle gameplay to another level. Now, if you really like this video, please leave a thumbs up on it. It helps me a ton. And if you want to help support me and my family financially for free, then use code Toby Wan Shinobi in your Fortnite item shop. If you want to improve your skills even more, then check out my YouTube channel and watch my must watch playlist for Fortnite Zero Build. I promise you will not regret it. And if you want to take your skills another step further, consider joining as a Shinobi clan member by clicking the join button down below. You get access to the private discord. And if you join as a master member, you get private trainings with me and other master members two to three days per week. And if you really want to pour fuel on the fire and increase your skills as fast as possible, consider booking a one-on-one -on -one session with myself at Toby Wan Shinobi. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Have yourself a great day. Shinobi out.